Public key cryptography does two things. Um, it gets rid of the key distribution problem for privacy. So in the old days, before public key cryptography, if uh, the cameraman and I wanted to exchange a message but didn't want you to know what we're saying, uh, we had a problem. We had to have agreed on a key ahead of time. Then I could encrypt a message, and I could call it out to him across this room. You could hear the encrypted message, and he could decrypt it knowing the key. But if we had not prearranged a key, as in fact is the case, we couldn't do it. What public key cryptography allows us to do is I tell him the protocol. You hear it, too. We then do some calculations and create some random numbers, each of us, and at the end, he and I have exchanged information that you cannot understand, which sounds impossible, and from one point of view, it is. If you have unlimited computing power, you can learn anything that we've said. But of course, you don't have unlimited computing power, nor do we. The real question is, can we come up with something that will just take a few seconds or a fraction of a second of CPU time for the two legitimate parties that would take you billions of years? And I can give you a quick idea of how one can do the seemingly impossible. Let's think in terms of strong boxes instead of calling the message out across the room. I want to put a message in a strong box and send it to the cameraman, but I have to pass it through you and I don't want you to be able to open it. So what I do is I put a combination lock on the strong box that only I know the combination to. When I pass it to you, you cannot open it. Of course, the cameraman can't open it either. But I've made the hasp on the lock big enough for him to put a second combination lock on that only he knows the combination to. So now it's doubly locked. He passes the doubly locked box to you. You still cannot open it. I can take off my lock, but not his. But now it's only his lock that's on it. I pass it back to you. You still cannot open it. When he gets it, he can open it and read the message that I put there. And that's roughly how it works. And in fact, this Diffie-Hellman-Merkel key exchange algorithm, a key thing is that it uses a commutative one-way function. And what's commutative about the strong box? Imagine that I had not made the hasp big enough to put two locks on. You could only put a single lock on. Well, then when the cameraman got it, he could put my strong box in a bigger strong box and lock that. But now it's no longer commutative. You, it doesn't, you cannot take the locks off in any order. You have to take the outer lock off first and the inner lock off second. So when I get the doubly locked strong box, I cannot get inside to take my lock off. And so that's how roughly a, a plausibility argument for how Diffie-Hellman Merkle key exchange works. The second thing that public key cryptography does, and again, Witt was the first one to formulate this uh, um, is digital signatures. Um, we realized that you needed a digital equivalent of a written signature. So it had to be easy for the signer to, to produce. It had to be easy for the uh, authenticator, the recipient, to authenticate it. But it had to be hard for anyone, including the recipient, to change the contents of the message or to forge a new signature. Written signatures are inadequate here because my written signature looks the same on a $10 check or a million dollar check. And so if you get my written sig signature, you can copy it onto the million dollar check. The digital signature uh, is message dependent. That's really important. And so the, the signature, ch it depends both on your identity and the contents of the message and changing even one bit of the message. So in particular, changing from $10 to a million dollars, which is more than one bit, would totally invalidate the signature. And um, the way public key cryptography works is to have two keys. One key is public and one key is secret. Normally in cryptography, the same secret key is used to encrypt and decrypt. But by breaking it this way, uh, you're able to do these two things. There still is a secret key. There's just a public key and the inverses to one another. And the way it works if I want to send you a message privately, I look up your public key and I encrypt the message using your public key. Only you who know your secret key can decrypt it. If I want to sign a message, I act on it with my secret key that only I know. You can use my public key to verify it. And that's public key cryptography. In a nutshell. <laughs> Big nutshell. <laughs>